This is the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4. You can fold it in half, flip it open, and just about place it anywhere to create content. Much like its predecessor, the Flip 4 continues to be an interactive piece of tech and one of the most fun phones to use. I will admit that Samsung hasn't reinvented the wheel over here. This isn't exactly a giant leap over the Flip 3, and yet it offers just the right number of refinements that are easy to appreciate. The refinements start with design. This version has a slightly smaller hinge and thinner bezels around the screen. The frame is also flatter and the rear glass back gets a frosty matte finish, so the whole thing looks more modern and compact. I've been testing the new Bora purple version, but it can be picked up in graphite and pink gold colorways. If none of those shades rock your boat, then Samsung does offer bespoke editions of the Flip 4. This lets you choose from a couple of additional colors, though it does cost 3000 rupees extra and is only available if you buy the 256 GB storage model. Durability has also been enhanced with improved ultra-thin glass spread across the main display, while the outer casing gets an upgrade to Gorilla Glass Victus Plus. In addition to all these design changes, the Flip 4 has a more useful cover screen. It's still the same 1.9-inch Super AMOLED display, but Samsung has added handy features like access to quick settings, the ability to send quick replies to text messages, and enable portrait mode directly from the cover display. I also like the colorful clock faces, and the cover display has some new widgets, including a speed dial option for up to three contacts. Unlike the Flip 3, you can now delete whichever widgets you don't want, and that means less swipes, which is always a good thing. The main display on the Flip 4 remains unchanged. It stands tall at 6.7 inches with a 22 to 9 aspect ratio and 120 Hz adaptive refresh rate. This is a fantastic looking 1080p OLED panel that offers punchy colors, deep blacks, and smooth scrolling. You can still see and feel the crease in the middle of the display, but I didn't find it overly bothersome. The inner screen also supports flex mode, a feature that lets you launch a separate control panel for apps on the bottom part of the display when the phone is folded halfway. With the Flip 4, flex mode gets its very own touchpad and can be used to navigate the top half of the screen. It's a clever way to take advantage of this phone's unique form factor, even though I didn't find myself using it all that much. As for internal hardware upgrades, the Flip 4 runs on the new Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 processor, which of course is the best brain an Android can get right now. That's paired with 8GB of RAM for fast performance across the board. In my testing, it easily handled multiple apps at once and ran Call of Duty Mobile without a problem. The phone can get a bit warm during longer gaming sessions, but I never once experienced a slowdown. Another notable upgrade in the hardware department is battery capacity. It seems Samsung paid attention to the criticisms about the Flip 3's underwhelming endurance and made some much needed changes. In addition to the more power efficient Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 chipset, the battery has also been boosted from 3300mAh to 3700mAh. Now while this is a step in the right direction, the Flip 4 isn't exactly a marathon runner. Generally speaking, it will get through a day of use, but in most cases I found myself searching for a charger way before bedtime. The better news is that the phone charges faster at 25W over last year's 15W. You will have to supply your own charger, but a 30-minute top-up will deliver about 50% juice. Finally, let's talk about the Flip 4's cameras. The setup is nearly identical to the one found on the Flip 3, though the 12-megapixel wide sensor is a little larger than before and thus better at capturing more light. Apart from that, you still get the same 12-megapixel ultra-wide and 10-megapixel front-facing camera. Pictures from both the rear cameras are typical Samsung with vibrant colors, lots of sharpening, and great dynamic range. The bigger sensor improves low-light photography too, and the dedicated night mode manages to keep noise at bay. The Flip 4 also gets support for portrait mode photos in the dark, and I gotta say, I'm impressed with the results. The Flip 4 records video up to 4K resolution with all three of its cameras. Footage from the main camera is crisp, and pans are mostly smooth thanks to optical image stabilization. The 10 megapixel front camera isn't too bad either, but I recommend shooting superior selfies with the rear cameras by using the cover screen as a viewfinder. It's a neat way to take a picture, and the cover screen will show selfie previews with the same photo ratio as the final image, which I think is pretty cool. Overall, these are quite competent cameras, but of course they're not in the same league as Samsung's own Galaxy S22 series or even the Galaxy Z Fold 4 which it was launched alongside. Still, I really enjoyed creating content with this phone, and it has nothing to do with the camera hardware. The main attraction here is the Flip 4's flexible form factor that provides a unique experience for recording a video or snapping a picture. 
I can place the phone on any even surface to shoot a time lapse, or I can take a time selfie from a comfortable distance. It's like having a camera and a tripod all in one. Now, to be fair, the Flip 3 can do the exact same things, but Samsung is promoting this feature under its new FlexCam branding, which now works with Meta Powered App, so you can record stories and film reels on Instagram completely hands-free. Before I deliver my final verdict, there are a couple of other things that you should know about the Galaxy Z Flip 4. The phone runs Android 12 out of the box with One UI 4.1.1. It's intuitive to navigate and is aided by plenty of customization options. On top of that, Samsung has committed to provide four years of major Android updates and five years of security updates for the Flip 4, making it one of the longest lasting Android devices available. Apart from that, you get some extra conveniences like an IPX8 water resistance rating, wireless charging, and stereo speakers. The side-mounted fingerprint scanner hasn't gone anywhere and remains very quick at unlocking the phone. Storage options include 128 GB and 256 GB, but neither are expandable through micro SD, meaning you're stuck with the onboard limit. One important thing to note is that the Flip 4 comes with a pre-applied screen guard, and I seriously suggest you don't remove this as it ensures the ultra-thin glass stays protected at all times. The Flip 4 benefits from a small number of meaningful upgrades. It's faster than before, offers better software support across both screens, and feels more portable. But at a starting price of 89,999 rupees, it seems to have some drawbacks. The battery life, for example, is average at best, and while the cameras are good, they don't quite live up to other similarly priced handsets. That said, I'm willing to bet that most people are willing to overlook these blemishes because as far as clamshell style folding phones go, you literally won't find anything better than the Z Flip 4.